Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Nanam Paramam Dheyam Knowledge is Supreme Welcome back. So uh, we have seen uh, how a feedback control implementation is done and what is the transfer function uh, when we look at the closed loop of a system by using a feedback control. In this uh, lecture, uh, we will now look at what are the basic uh, control actions uh, which are present when we or which are possible when we try to implement a feedback control system or feedback control strategy. Uh, so those are mainly proportional action, integral action and derivative action. So we will look at what is the rationale uh, behind each of those actions. Uh, we will then analyze the closed loop response of a system uh, when th the system is subjected to these controllers and lastly we will see what is the effect of controller parameters and what sort of dynamics uh, does it have when we change some of the parameters of the control system. So before moving forward, uh, let me just uh, clarify the actions of a feedback controller. There are two distinct types of actions uh, which a feedback controller has and depending on the type of action, uh, the controller parameters have to be chosen. If we choose that uh, wrongly, then the controller will not uh, be able to do the job for which it is installed. So uh, we first need to look at whether the controller is going to be direct acting or reverse acting. So in order to motivate these, uh, let me consider two implementations of feedback control. So the first one is the same as what we had looked uh, just a while back. So it is the feedback control of level. So we are trying to control this level, this is the disturbance. And the way we do it is we first measure the level accordingly it is compared with the set value that error goes to the controller and then that controller will take an action and make a change to the valve and then finally you will get the change into the manipulated variable which is f out. Now let us consider a second example again the system we had considered earlier is the stirred heater or stirred tank heater uh, where you have some feed coming in at temperature Ti and you want to control the temperature inside this vessel to some value T and that is done by changing the heat flow into this system. So in this case uh, if we want to implement feedback control what we will be doing is we will first measure the temperature so that is temperature indicator then we will that will be compared with the desired value of set point and then it will go to the controller which is the temperature controller and the output of that controller will change uh, this manipulated variable which may be the steam flow rate. Uh, which will change the duty uh, or the heat duty supplied to this particular system. So both of these are feedback control systems and I would like you to pause for a bit and try to see if there is any distinction or any difference between these two feedback controllers. Okay, so welcome back. Uh, I hope uh, you were able to find uh, the distinction between these two systems and if you have not uh, then let me go over it. So in both the cases let us uh, look at uh, what happens when at the steady state you will have your output is equal to the set value. 
So in both the cases output will be equal to the set value. Let us say uh, at some finite time because of some disturbance this y increases beyond the set point in both the cases. So in this case as y increases which means the height inside this tank increases what is the control action that is needed to maintain the level that your output should also increase. So which is same as the controller output should also increase. So if I represent u as the controller output then it has to increase when my height increases which ultimately results in increase in f out. Now you look at the, this case of the stirred tank heater. Let us say the y increases beyond the set point that means the temperature inside this tank is above the desired value. Now what should the controller do? It should actually cut down on the heating duty supplied to the system. That means the controller output should decrease. So now you can notice the difference between these two systems. Here an increase in the output causes increase in the controller output. Therefore, it is known as direct acting controller. In this case, increase in the output causes a decrease in the controller output. Therefore, it is known as reverse acting controller. So it is very essential that uh, you know what is the type of action of the feedback controller whether it is direct acting or reverse acting. If you use a reverse acting controller to control this particular process, you will realize that the level will never be maintained by any type of feedback controller. Similarly, if for this particular system, I use a direct acting controller, again the system, this feedback system will never be able to maintain the temperature to its desired value. So the first and foremost thing before even deciding what type of a feedback control we want, what type of feedback control action we need in terms of the proportional integral or derivative action, the first thing you should be trying to find out is whether your system is going to be a direct acting or a reverse acting. And this becomes, this is not that straightforward uh, when we look at the industrial implementations of systems because a same system may give you a direct or reverse action depending on the type of actuator which is inside the process. So this will try to explain this. Uh, let us say we have the same example of liquid surge tank. And here we considered that as the valve opening increases or I would say valve signal increases, F out increases because the valve opening increases. So these types of valves are known as fail close valves which means if there is no signal given to the wall, the opening will be 0 and the flow out of that wall will also be 0. So if that is the case and if we implement a feedback control onto this system, which will be of this form, then this feedback control system will be direct acting. But for the same system, if we have so this the wall which is known as a fail open wall. So the same system which is generally represented in its uh, piping and instrumentation diagram by a small subscript FO. So the implementation is exactly the same.
but what you now see is as this is a fail open type of wall as wall signal increases the wall opening decreases or that means f out decreases that is because uh, when the wall does not have any signal the wall is completely open or the wall has 100% opening so if that is the case and you try to find out what happens when the height increases in that case you will realize that in order to increase f out the controller signal will have to reduce and because of that if it is a fail open wall then the same feedback control system would be reverse acting you can see that same system only difference is the actuator type in one case the actuator is fail close and uh, this other case the actuator is fail open just this small difference is going to make uh, the controller to be either direct acting or reverse acting and as i had said earlier uh, that uh, if we use or if mistakenly use this to be a direct acting controller it will never be able to maintain the level and as we look at the control systems uh, we'll see why that is the case uh, on a more mathematical uh, at a higher through mathematical analysis as well so it is very important uh, to know what is the type of the controller <coughs> action so let us now look at uh, what are the different type of control actions which are possible in feedback control and the first or the simplest uh, control action uh, simply simplest in terms of implementation is on off control so on off control is uh, one of the very commonly used uh, control strategy feedback control strategy uh, which is uh, which is uh, for a very low key objectives or very cheap control systems uh, will have on off control action and uh, those uh, refer to let's say if you have a thermocouple or temperature controller in your house then those are typically are on off type of controller in your lab uh, whenever you had some sort of a flow or a temperature controller uh, using a small heater uh, those are also typically on off type of controllers so on off controller uh, the philosophy uh, is that the controller output depends on sign of the error so all you are interested in is what is the sign of the error whether the error is positive or error is negative you don't even look at what is the magnitude of error and uh, that is why it is very simple or easy to implement and depending on the sides depending on the sign of the error control action is taken so let us say if the controller is direct acting and if y set minus y which is the error if it is greater than 0 then u will be equal to the minimum value of u if y set minus y is less than 0 if the error is negative then u will be made equal to the maximum value of u and the exactly opposite uh, pairing works uh, when we have reverse acting controller so you can see that uh, all we are interested in is just checking whether 
what is the value of y in relation to y set if y is less than the set point and if the controller is direct acting then the manipulated input is kept at its minimum value the moment y becomes greater than the set point value the manipulated input completely shifts the direction or it goes from the minimum value to the maximum value so the only two values which the manipulated variable can take is the u max and u min and in typical uh, physical systems uh, this u or the refers uh, to the opening of a wall some sort of a controller wall and then that means the wall will go between completely closed to completely open position so typically uh, this would be completely closed if it is a fail close type of wall and this would typically mean completely open so the wall will co continuously move between the maximum open and close so it will be toggling between the two values continuously and as uh, there is always some lag associated with the measurement and the controller to take an action the wall to open or close the system will never be able to reach the value of y set so continuously y will go above and below the set point value and the wall will keep on toggling between the closed and open positions in order to because of that the wall will undergo severe wear and tear and then the wall will have to be replaced uh, or the, it will have mechanical failure quite often in order to avoid that uh, there is a concept of a dead band which is added to this on off controller so instead of taking action as soon as y goes below or above the set point there is some dead band is provided uh, between which no control action is taken so uh, the same on off control in the presence of dead band will look like this so if the controller is direct acting y set minus y rather than greater than 0 we look at greater than some positive number then u becomes u min if y set minus y is less than the negative of that number u goes to u max and then if this y set minus y is between these two values including 0 no action is taken so if the wall was earlier at minimum position it will remain at minimum if it was at maximum position it will remain at maximum so because of that during this interval or there is generally some freedom given for this y to remain below the set point without taking any control action and this significantly reduces the toggling or the on off moving of the wall from on to off position quite often and because of that uh, the wall life gets extended and this db is known as the dead band it's the band between which no controller action is taken so the larger the dead band uh, what is going to happen is that uh, the wall will have less toggling but at the same time you are allowing the output to go that much, so you are allowing the output to deviate that much from the set point so the effect of dead band is so as the dead band increases y set minus y increases so that means uh, the we'll say average value of that so that means larger deviation from the set value but this comes at an advantage that our wall toggling reduces so this uh, dead band uh, 
in uh, the higher dead bend is used to avoid the wall to go from on off position or at a much higher frequency so typically the dead bend is selected based on the trade off between how much deviation is allowable and correspondingly how much wall toggling is allowed so as a trade off between these two the dead bend gets selected uh, you can see that this on off controller is very easy to implement uh, but it has a significant disadvantage uh, the two of the main disadvantages the first of all it cannot maintain the set value so if we want to control the variable exactly at the set point value then on off controller will not be a good choice and secondly so as the wall toggles a lot uh, the life of the wall is reduced so it will only be used for very non critical control objectives where a significantly large dead band will be used to avoid the wall toggling and uh, you are still okay by having that much of an offset so one of the examples uh, from real life uh, is level control in intercooler for air compressor so what happens is whenever you are trying to compress air Uh, from ambient conditions to some higher value you would typically go with multi stage compressors and as the compression of air is going to in increase its temperature in order to maintain the efficiency of compression you have to cool that air stream before it enters the next level or next uh, compressor stage as we are dealing with air uh, air also has a capacity to hold moisture and as you compress the air and reduce the temperature after this cooler there is a possibility of condensation condensation of water at that point and if we have this two phase mixture of air and water which goes into the compressor again that is very detrimental to the compressor blades so at that point uh, there is a requirement that you collect this liquid and then remove this liquid after the heat exchanger now as it turns out uh, this level builds very slowly and typically there is no objective in terms of controlling this level apart from the fact that you don't want this particular vessel to get completely filled so the level control on this particular uh, after cooler is typically on off type of controller uh, which controls uh, a solenoid wall uh, which is at the outlet of this so when this level goes beyond a certain value this wall will open and empty out this entire contents again it will get closed when the level goes below the desired value and then the system will again operate till the level gets filled up so these kind of very low key uh, non critical objectives uh, will be the places where on off controller will be used in an on an industrial scale so thank you